A cozy spaghetti with a meat sauce is a great Midwestern staple and it's a classic to have on a weeknight because it goes together quickly, has a ton of flavor, and your family's gonna love it. Let's make some. So a meat sauce for spaghetti, this is not a traditional red sauce. This is something we would have made growing up. I grew up in the Midwest. And it contains some vegetables, some pepper, some onion as a base, and then tomatoes in different forms, both the paste to be a little thicker, then of course some tomato sauce for the right consistency, and then some tomato dice up just to kind of give you that right all together combination that you really want. So what we're gonna do is start with the base, which is some onion and some pepper. Now, green pepper is what we often would have put in. You know, we often growing up had home canned that we would have just made, and this is what it really tastes like. Now you're gonna see on TV, a lot of times people will open up a pepper like this, where they cut off the top and bottom, cut it down, and then this way you can see it opens it up that you could have an even slicing. Now, the one thing I do wanna make sure we know though about this is, that this is a great way to make sure you have even planks. So you can just go through and then get an even dice on them once we cut them the other way. But that does not mean you want to get rid of these top and bottom. I will cut those up too, and you can see I'm gonna dice those up just the same. It just depends on how you want your cutting skills to be, and if you want things to be somewhat even. The reason we try to do some even cutting sometimes is because then things will actually saute evenly or cook evenly, depending on what you're making. So it's not that it's needed, it's just that these little things all help to me things cook better, things cook more evenly. So the green pepper, what it's gonna do is kind of create an offset flavor. It is not traditional. This is not, like I said, a traditional Italian red sauce, and I would never try to build as that. Instead, this is just a great meat sauce to put on your spaghetti. It's one of those homey ones that you would have had, well, if you're like me growing up, or maybe at your grandma's house. Something that just has a lot of flavor. It's a great weeknight meal, and that's what I love about this. It goes together really quick. And I know we're all gonna say, well, you can just go buy a jar. You could, but first thing, I like to know where my food comes from. I like to make it. Two, I think the flavor's actually better when you make it. So right here I have some melted butter. The reason I'm doing butter, do you hear that sizzle? The reason I'm doing butter is because it actually rounds out the flavor. Tomatoes have acidity, so the butter actually adds this richness to them that to me really just helps round them out. So I'm gonna add in both the pepper and the onion. We're gonna let it soften and saute. While it's in there just now, I'm gonna add in a little bit of salt too. And then we're gonna come back and keep going. My onions and peppers are just about ready. So what I'm doing is getting my garlic ready. Now when I do garlic, after you take the husk off, I always just, if I'm gonna mince it, I like to smash it. And that's just taking like the back of a knife like this, slapping it down and see how it just smashes it open. That to me just helps it have an even base. And then I can go through and just slice it one way, kind of make planks and then turn it and go through the other way. Now you could put it through a garlic press. Sometimes that makes it more almost, it just depends what you're making. It makes it more of a juice than the actual garlic and it all will have a different flavor. So mincing it to me in this case gives you a nice strong garlic flavor but not quite the astringency that pressing it can if you put it through a press. Both will work. It's a minute little difference, but it's kind of a personal preference. And sometimes I'm like, you know what? I like it better than this one chopped. So I'm just gonna mince it somewhat and now take it all off. I'm gonna put it on my little, you know, I do admit, I used to think these were stupid, but having a little helper in the kitchen, it's nice. So you can see now my onion and my pepper are actually softened. We're getting just a little bit of color and I don't want too much color. So that's what I'm gonna add my garlic. And the reason we didn't put the garlic in in the beginning is because it can turn bitter if it cooks too much and it can almost get a little burnt. To this at this point too, I'm gonna add my dried basil, dried oregano and a little bit of pepper flake. Now, the reason I'm doing dried is because guess what? They're pantry staples. We're in the middle of winter in Iowa. That's what's gonna work. And they have a lot of great flavor. If you keep fresh dried spices, as in replace them once in a while, it's a great thing to use in the kitchen. There's nothing wrong with that. Now, the reason I'm adding them to the fat, the fat, the butter, it wakes it up and it brings those flavors out. So I'm just gonna let this saute for a few seconds. The garlic just needs 30 seconds to a minute. And instantly what I am smelling here is that beautiful garlic aroma. Those dried herbs smell delicious. I love, I love how simple this is. And now what we're gonna do is add ground beef. Now you could do any type of ground meat. The beef actually works really well in this. So what I'm gonna do is just break this up into pieces with my spatula and let it cook all the way through. So the beef has pretty much all browned and I like to make sure I get a lean beef. So I usually get a 92% lean. 
and that doesn't give me then too much fat or any liquid in the bottom. Now, if you have less and you wanna drain off some of the excess, you always can. But once it's fully cooked through, I like to now add some tomato paste. So I'm adding a good amount of tomato paste. One, tomato paste has a richness to it. It has a sweetness and it adds all that. But I like to cook it a bit before I just go ahead. I know it sounds like, oh, seriously, another step. These steps make a huge difference. And so sometimes the paste can have a little bit of an uncooked flavor. And so instead what I like to do is really start cooking it into the meat. So I'm gonna let it sit here for a couple minutes and really cook in, and then we'll just build the sauce on top of it. So the paste has been cooking and how I like to know when it's done, if you come in and look, when you pull away, you see how it's starting to stick to the bottom and leaving a little bit of a film or a little layer down there? That's perfect. That means it's starting to really cook and that's what you want. So at this point now we can just build our sauce on top. So we have a mixture, we have some tomato sauce, that has a kind of a nice thickness, a good viscosity to it, and you want all of that. And then we also have some diced up tomatoes. So again, we're doing a play, and they all have different flavors. Now, the important thing here is, I had poured these in some bowls so I could kind of show you better, but the important thing to know is, when we're at home, what do we pour them from? Containers, whether it's cans, this was the tomato sauce, so the rest of it's in here. But what I wanna say is, look what's in that can. A lot of goodness. Now, when you're pouring it in here, do not fear putting in a little bit of water, even if it's not in the recipe. This is what you do here, and you just shake it in, make sure to get it all out, and then pour that right in. You don't wanna waste that goodness. Same with my chopped tomatoes. I didn't get them all put in because they didn't fit in that bowl, but I want you to see at home, you're just gonna pour them directly from whatever container they're in, a big can, a big carton like this. You're gonna put a little bit of water in there. Why? Because that's what's gonna help you get out all that tomato goodness, believe me. You wanna do those steps. Those are the things your moms, your grandmas did that really help extend it, but also get all the flavor. So now I'm gonna let this come to a simmer. I'm gonna let it just slowly simmer. I'm bringing my water here to a boil. Once it's at a boil, I'm gonna salt it and put my spaghetti in. We're gonna have it really soon. That's the best part here. So the pasta is just getting done. It's al dente, that's important. So it's not overdone. Still has a little bit of tooth. It's gonna finish up with the sauce here, which is simmering away beautifully. This is when the flavors really start melding together with the sauce. And it's important that they do actually sit here and just simmer. So now instead of just draining it, I like to actually leave a little bit of this liquid with it. So I'm gonna just take this pasta and put it right into the sauce. And you're gonna see that it still is dripping and some of that residual water that has all that starch in it from the pasta is actually gonna go into the sauce. And that's gonna help kind of give it more of a great consistency with the pasta. I think that's really important here is that I'm one putting it together. Now, I will admit too, growing up, we didn't, we didn't really dress our pasta in the sauce. Mom would usually have a bowl of each on the table, but the noodles, if they finish cooking in the sauce like this, they actually absorb it and they're at the better consistency. They don't get mushy because they're not overcooked and they just meld one kind of with the sauce. They soak some of it in and it just works better. So you can also just always, if you need to thin out your sauce, save this water for a bit in case you need it. But what I'm gonna do is just stir this into the sauce let it keep just slowly kind of simmering just a little bit and it's gonna finish mixing together and serve it up. It's time to eat. Now you can of course put this in a serving platter however you want. If it's a weeknight meal, you can serve it right from here too. You know, what I love about this is it's simple. It actually goes together pretty quickly and you get this beautiful pasta out of it. Now, of course, I had this out to show you. You can use whatever pepper in here you like. I don't want you to feel like, oh no, I only need a green pepper. You have a red pepper, use it. The pepper just adds an offset of flavor, which I like. This is though still, even though it's a very homey, cozy, I still think we need some fresh Parmesan on top. And no, not the stuff in a plastic, that stuff in a plastic can. It has like, I don't know, it's like sawdust, it's weird. I like the actual Parmesan, it gives it really good flavor and I like a good dose of it right on top. It's like the final seasoning that makes all the difference. But look at that, is that not a delicious meal? So the best part is, well, actually the worst part here is that I have to eat noodles in front of you, which on camera is never that easy, but I'm going to. Mm. 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 You know what I love about this? It's like growing up, but it's even better because like it tastes so good. It's so full of flavor. You know, the work we went to with the sauce of sauteing the pepper and onion first, adding the paste later, letting that cook a little bit, it mellows, becomes sweeter and then building the sauce on top of that. 
so much flavor. Also, that pasta, not mushy at all. If you ever had spaghetti like in a school cafeteria and you were just like, it's just like this gluey, pasty stuff. That's not what this is. This is delicious. Very classic heartiness with the ground beef in it that takes on so much flavor from the dried herbs we add. Don't knock dry herbs. They're a great staple. They're in your kitchen for a reason. This is a great dish. It's great to make for a weeknight. Great to make even for a weekend. If you're having people over, it can serve a crowd. That's what's wonderful about it. And guess what? It's good as leftovers too. So what do I hope you do with this? I hope you share this video around so everyone can see how easy it is to make good food at home. You can do this. You don't have to have a jar of pasta sauce always in your cabinet. You can make some and it can be just as good. Try it. Check my website, wiseguide.com for this recipe. All my other recipes, they're on there. 